Hey everybody, Joy here. Joy here on a really pretty sunshiny Sunday morning in Kingston, Oklahoma. It is January 27, can you believe it? January 27, 2019. And I am gonna drink my coffee, so a lady that hates me when I drink my coffee, please go away and don't watch me anymore. <laughs> I was over at Becky's place. You know Becky. Oh, pardon me. I just cut my bangs, and so I've got these little tiny hairs in my eyes. Um, you know Becky over at Power Tools with Thread. Well, she's got a new video up, and Viv's got a new video up too, you guys. I always look to see because I really like those two, and I like to watch their videos. I feel like they're my friends. <laughs> but um, over at uh, Becky's place, look, there's another hair on my lipstick. Oh, could you just... <clears throat> I feel like I've had a cat crawling on my face. <laughs> when I cut my bangs, I take my scissors and I like poke them up into my bangs and I just like clip here and there and here and there so they won't be like a straight line across my eyebrows and so they'll be a little bit jagged. And so all through the day, these little hairs keep falling down. <laughs> so who cares? So anyway, <laughs> let me have another sip of my coffee. Maybe my brain will kick in. Uh oh, I kind of slurped on that one, you guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, over at Becky's place, I think it's Cat Can Do is what she calls herself. She said that she really likes to watch Jordan Fabrics and me. And she said she missed me. And I went, oh my gosh, somebody missed me. I have to dash upstairs and make the video. <laughs> so here I am. This is what I made yesterday, by the way. You remember my crazy, crazy pants from my last video that I made. My husband has brought them up half a dozen times. I am not kidding you. It is the craziest thing I've ever seen him do. Because he hardly ever notices what I make. I mean, I made this yesterday and I had it on all morning. He didn't even notice or say, oh, you have a new blouse. But those pants, <laughs> he said, Joy, I sure hope you didn't throw those pants away. I really like those. <laughs> so I made this blouse to, to go, um, go with those crazy pants that I made in the last video when Philly came over and we had our play day. I would love to do some kind of embroidery because I have these two embroidery machines, you know. But um, I don't know what I could embroider that would look as crazy as the pants look. <laughs> I might do some applique maybe, cut out a piece of it and make it in the shape of some circles or some hearts or something. Who knows, who knows. But anyway, I made this and I'm still making that same version blouse that you guys like so much. I think I've made it six times now. I have another one over on the ironing board, and as soon as I get through saying hello to you, I am going to set up the camera and show you how I put the hems in. I mean, there's nothing to it, but I know that, you know, a lot of you haven't seen all my videos. Some of you are new, and, and you haven't seen my old tutorials that I've done in the past. And what have I got, 300 videos or something? And, but do you know, did you guys know that on people's channel, that if you go to just their channel, and you push on videos and all of their videos come up and there's a search box at the top and you can search like um, surfeit designs or simplicity patterns or how to do such and such just whatever your subject is you're looking for and you can put it up there and the video that has that in it will come up so how cool is that so anyway, I'm going to show you how I do the hems. I, I've got my other blouse all done. It's so cute. It really is cute. I just love the fabric. I actually made another video for you guys a couple days ago. And um, I was making that blouse and I was telling you about that blouse. But I got to the end of the video and my mind jumped over to politics and Fox News, news in general, State of the Union. And anytime I think about that, I just go straight to being upset. <laughs> and so I got carried away. I said, oh, this is my blog and I can say anything I want to. <laughs> then when I went to upload it, I went, oh my God, nobody wants to hear that, Joy. You just don't even, don't even upload it. So I didn't. Aren't you glad? You're welcome. <laughs> so I didn't upload that one. So anyway, I decided I'll just make this one for you today just to say hello. And I have something I'm doing, something brand, brand new. Oh my gosh, it is so cool. Um, well, I think it is. Um, 
but I can't show it to you because it's gifts. Everything I've done so far is gifts, and so I can't hold it up and show you because, I don't know, chances are one in 200 trillion that who I made it for might watch my video. <laughs> You know, if you make a video and you say something about a person who, you know, you knew 25 years ago and you had a big fight and they never spoke to you again, and so you say something about it on a video, and next thing you know, they watch it and they say, I can't believe you said that about me. <laughs> so, you just can't be too careful. Even if you make up a name and you call them a different name, they still figure it out. <laughs> Oh, the church this morning. You guys know we go to church on YouTube, right? Mm. Mm, good. We go to church on YouTube. And we go to the church in San Antonio called Cornerstone Church, where John Hagee and his son Matthew Hagee are the preachers. Well, Hagee Sr. preached today on forgiveness. If any of you have a problem in your mind heart forgiving somebody somebody who really hurt you something terrible happened to you and you just can't forgive it please I don't even know if you can go back and listen to these old sermons you used to be able to but oh my goodness if you can look up Hagee's sermon on forgiveness it is so so good you know forgiveness isn't about the person that that did something really horrible to you and there's lots of people that have done horrible things to me said horrible things to me it's not about them forgiveness is about you when you forgive, it's like you let yourself out of jail. It's like you just set yourself free. And the person that you forgive, you don't have to be in their life. You don't have to associate with them. You don't have to be friends with them. But you have to forgive. And, um, I mean, look at what Jesus forgave. Look at what they did to Jesus. And he forgave them all. So, really, really important. So important to forgive. Did you know a lot of illnesses are caused by unforgiveness? Very true. When my husband first got cancer, back, oh, what was it, 10 years ago now, my mother lived about two and a half hours from where we are. And I called my mom, or my sister called her, somebody called her and said, oh my gosh, Jerry has cancer. She got in her car, and she drove, and she hadn't driven in a long time because she was afraid of the big streets in Oklahoma City. She lived in this little bitty dinky town with dirt roads and the streets weren't paved. When you drove down, dust went up like a big cloud. <laughs> she and Daddy even turned the car over and fell in a ditch one time. <laughs> but anyway, she got in her car and she drove all the way to Edmond to our house and she came in. And she said, I wanna talk to Jerry, I wanna talk to Jerry. And so she went in to wherever Jerry was, probably in his office, and she told him, she said, Jerry, Search your heart if there's anybody, any time in your life that you haven't forgiven, please forgive them. Because she said that he couldn't be healed unless he um, didn't have any unforgiveness in his heart. And my mom wasn't there an hour and she turned around and drove back home. She drove the whole way there just to tell Jerry that. And there actually was somebody. It was somebody that had a thing for me at one point and was always after me, if you know what I mean. Um, supposedly his best friend, but really was around just, you know, to flirt with me, we'll say that. <laughs> and so Jerry was very, very unhappy about that and had a hard time forgiving that. So that was the only thing he could think of, but he did, he forgave. And so anyway, really, really important, you guys. So I will turn this off and I'll set up my next, actually it was before this one, it's a blue one, it's really pretty, um, because I made another pair of those um, Clara, what are they called, the Clara tights. I made another pair of those, and I wanna show you those, and then I made this uh, blue blouse to go with those. So I'll set it up, and then I'll set up my camera, and I'll show you guys how I put the hems in, the sleeves and the bottom of the shirt, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, here I am with my ironing board. And here is my other blouse. It's really pretty. It's got little silver dots all over it. Sparkly silver, glitter silver. Really pretty. It's a lot prettier than the one I have on. And these two are still from that same SureFit Designs pattern. I've done some V-necks, V-necks, I've done some boat necks, I've done cap sleeves, I've done 
um, three quarter sleeves and different lengths. So I sure hope this never goes out of style because I've made so many of them. So this is all done except for, you see here the back of my shirts? See the back of that shirt? Let me get it even with the shoulders. For you people that have large busts, see the back, can you tell? It ends, hello, it ends an inch higher than the front. See, the front hangs down lower because you need more fabric to go over the humps. You don't have boobs in the back, hopefully. <laughs> I had a secretary one time that said, my ex-husband's dating this girl and I swear she's got boobs in the back. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that is strange. But anyway, <laughs> so here's what you have to have. I also used it on the neckline. I use this on everything. I use miles of this stuff. It's wonderful. I'm going to show you the box of what it looks like. This is how it comes. If you order one quarter inch, two rolls come in the box. If you order one half inch, one roll comes in the box. And it's how many feet long does it say? It is 40 yards long. So this is what it looks like. Light, and I always use light. You don't want heavy, you know. I always sew over these hems after I steam them with the steam machine. So I don't expect it to hold for a thousand years with this stuff, although it might. I put light steam and seam on those flowers you saw the other day and they held through the washer and the dryer. But steam and seam to light, L-I-T-E. Okay, I have half inch. Hey, I have a red shirt on, you can see it. And I have quarter inch, see? Half inch, quarter inch. How do you know which one to use? You just use whichever one you want to. If I'm going to have a quarter inch hem, I'll use the quarter inch. If I'm going to have a three eighths inch hem, I'll use the quarter inch. If I'm going to have a half inch hem, I'll use the half inch. But you could still use the quarter inch. So what you do is you take your blouse. I'm going to do this to the sleeves too, but when I do the sleeves, I put them on this. If you guys don't have a sleeve board, you must have been born yesterday, I don't know, but if you don't have a sleeve board, please get one. If you sew clothes for yourself, you got to have one. You really do. So, but for the hem, and my hem's huge because of the fullness of this blouse, so I just wrap it around the end of my ironing board here. And you guys are going to say, what kind of ironing board is that? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> it's the one that has interchangeable top, and it can be... You know, the pointy kind, how can you do pointy? The pointy kind, or it can be square, and I have it as the, as the big rectangle down for quilting. And so since that's one I like the best, I just leave it that way. And then if I need a point, I'll use that. Um, I like to use my hams. You gotta have hams too. I'll use my hams or I'll use my, um, my sleeve board if I have to have a point. Or if I think, I'm never going to make another quilt, I'm sick of it, I'll take this square part off and I'll put the pointy part on. It's really cool. But I can't tell you. Oh, it's called Reliable. There's the name at the bottom. Reliable. Yes. So see here, you just unroll this. And I unroll a lot of it. And if you're going to go around a curved area, you have to take some scissors and clip into this tape. And then it will curve. But if you're just doing one, this is pretty straight all the way around. You just stick it on and it kind of sticks by itself. Oh, this one's got tape on the top right there. Sometimes the tape sticks to the wrong side of the paper. I don't know. Let me throw this away. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I probably am going to come across a piece here that isn't sticky. Feel it and make sure you got sticky the whole way. Where's my scissors? I don't know. Anyway, let's put this on here. Now you've got to have music for this, y'all. But you know, it's a crime to have music. They can send you straight to music jail if you have music on your video and you're not the one that invented it. What iron is that, Joy? <laughs> this is the Rowenta Perfect Steam. I love it. I bought it from Amazon. I buy everything from Amazon, you guys. 
I just bought myself a desk from Amazon because I'm setting up an office in Jerry's office. We have a study downstairs and when we built it we knew it was going to be an office so we built a desk into one wall and we put cabinets above it and file drawers below it and so that's always been Jerry's office. Well now that I'm moving home and bringing all of our personal effects home from the office, you know when you own the buildings and you own the business you know, you just keep all your personal stuff there, too. Well, now that it's not our business anymore, I'm bringing it all home, and it's just stacked all over the place in the laundry room, the end of the bar in the kitchen, in my car. I've got two briefcases now instead of one. So I told Jerry the other day, I said, Honey, I've got to have a desk. I said, I, I'm just getting completely unorganized here because there's just stacks of paper everywhere. And he said, Oh, that's just fine. So um, I told him it had to be, Hold on, I'm going to grab some scissors. <clears throat> You gotta have scissors and you gotta have a gauge. That's what you gotta have. And let me tell you this this is a cool trick. Do you see the, hand, the uh, side seam here? I don't like to just turn the side seam up onto itself because it's too fat. So, what I do is, however fat my hem is gonna be, which is one half inch, I put this gauge on one half inch, I measure up from the bottom of the shirt and I cut the seam allowance at one half inch. Then I take the bottom half inch and I flip it over. I don't think I can show you. I don't want to take it off of here to show you, but hopefully you can understand that. I just clip it and so the one half inch of the seam allowance goes the opposite direction of the whole seam allowance. And then I just I actually cut a little bit of it off. It's going to be taped down and sewn down and so I cut some of the serging off the edge of it. Oops, there's another place where my sticky stuff's coming off. No, 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 don't come off. And so then I just put this right over top of that, flip it the opposite direction, and that way, when you iron your hem up, sometimes you get it stuck to your like elbows and your chin and everything else. <laughs> Which is what's so nice about it, is before you iron it on, it's already sticky and it stays. It's really cool. Okay, so keep going, 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 going. And then you iron it down. Now you just iron it a little bit. Just a little bit at first. Just so, you have to iron it down enough so it sticks enough that when you pull the paper off, the sticky stuff doesn't come off with it. Okay, now I'm going to pull a bunch more out. <clears throat> Why is that sticking? Oh my goodness, it's doing really bad, you guys. It's coming off. Oh my. It's on both sides. That's just not right. It's not supposed to do that, guys. So I pulled all of that off. It wasn't supposed to be on it. This is kind of a defective roll. That might happen when... Now feel it. See, there's a whole place here where there's no sticky stuff. So I'm going to cut that off because it's got sticky stuff all on one side and then it's all rolled up and sometimes the sticky part that it's against that's supposed to be on another piece sticks to, sticks to the back of the first piece. I hope that makes sense. It's hard. The English language is kind of hard to communicate with sometimes. You ever notice that? The English language is strange anyway. I'm sure glad you're smarter when you're a little baby and you can learn how to talk. <laughs> don't realize, oh, this language is too hard for me. I can't learn it. <laughs> Spanish. Oh, my goodness. Their words are so long. Like, my goodness. I took Spanish. I took Spanish like three years in school. And my name is Joy Marie. What did the teacher call me? My last name was Clingerman. Nobody could ever say it or spell it. Um, oh, she called me Maria. She was, my name was Joy Marie, so she called me. She gave everybody a name. She called me Maria. So she always would say, Senorita Maria. Senorita Maria. So I learned how to say Senorita Maria. <laughs> and I could pronounce it real good. I could say the uh, letters good. A -E -O -U. A -E -O -U. A -E -O -U. A -E -I -O -U in A-E-O-U. A-E-I-O-U in English. Now see my tape is getting, you kind of have to be patient with this, guys. I don't like it to go outside over the edge, and that's what it's trying to do. So I'm just going to cut it off and start a new piece. 
because I don't want it outside the edge of the fabric because then it will stick to my iron. So I'm just starting the new piece, okay? So anyway, and there's a whole big place under here now that doesn't have any tape. I wish I hadn't pulled this roll out, but you might as well learn the bad with the good, huh? I'm going to tell you what, if you check this, it's all supposed to be sticky on one side. If you feel it like right here and it's sticky on both sides, and you put your iron on that, oh, 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 you are not going to be a happy camper. You are going to be mad. And then you're going to have to watch my video on how you clean an iron. Because I promise you, it's going to need cleaning. <laughs> All right, we're starting a new roll. Now you can feel this because you can see my fingers. I'm pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. Well, if I push it down and I feel the sticky stuff on the side I'm pushing on, then I know something's wrong. It's not supposed to be sticky on that side. It's supposed to be sticky on the bottom. <clears throat> so... I had an entire roll do that for me one time. The entire roll, the sticky stuff, was on the wrong side. So I just learned, use that one backwards, you know. You have to go with the flow. Oh, it's a good thing I've got a mile of this to go around my board. It's hung up on some edge. There you go. Now you guys probably have the ironing board that's got the um, rounded nose on the end of it. And so it's a lot easier to arrange your fabric on that, of course. And if you're going to have a half inch hem, now here I am at the other seam. So remember what I'm going to do? I'm going to measure up a half inch and I'm going to cut this. And oh my gosh, I've got to upload this in Pokey Kingston Internet Land. I'm going to my other house on Friday this week because I'm retiring on Thursday. I am, and guess what? Guess what? I was never so surprised. Never so surprised. I haven't worked at our other store for years. I used to work there all the time. That was my, my office and where I worked. But then we hired this lady named Lou, and I decided that I was going to come down here and work with Jerry or whatever I decided. Oh, no, the manager down here quit, and so I had to come dashing down here and manage this store. And so Lou took over managing that store. So I haven't worked there for years and years. But a lot of the people that work up there, they've worked for us for 10, 15 years. So they know me and they remember the day. <laughs> They're probably glad that day is over. But they know me, they know me well. <clears throat> and um, so one of the girls called me the other day and she said, we want to give you a retirement party. I said, oh my God, are you serious? Are you serious? I was so excited. I was so excited. I just couldn't even believe it. I just figured they'd be saying, thank God we're done with her. We never have to put up with her again. So <laughs> I'm going up there for my retirement party, and we're going to do it on the 4th. You know, our anniversary is on the 1st, and so Jerry and I will be celebrating our 44th wedding anniversary on the 1st. And... Um, then, the 4th is on a Monday, and it's going to be at nighttime. And we're going to a restaurant that we all really like. And they said, we want to go at night because we want to have a margarita. And so then I went, oh my gosh, well, I can't drink and drive. I mean, I'd be good to drive in the dark when I'm sober. <laughs> and I can smell a margarita and be half drunk. <laughs> so anyway, I went and told Jerry. I said, oh my gosh, you're going to have to come take me and bring me home because... I want to have a margarita with Lou and Paula. Oh, I can't get that out. A little piece of thread attached itself to this, so fine. I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so now I've got all this sticky stuff on here, a half inch, right? And I peeled the paper off. Did you see how I peeled the paper off? Peeled paper off. Peeled the paper off, and the sticky stuff stayed. See here? Peeled the tape off. One half inch tape. More of it. So now, you've got your half inch to go by, so all you have to do is fold it up and measure. Now you get to where, you know, most people can tell a half inch, or you can just go by the fold on the tape. But even that, you know, it's real, 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 real thin because it's steamacine white. So, just measure up a half an inch or however much you've decided. In the sleeves, I'll just do a quarter inch, okay? So there it is, there's my half inch. 
So now, now that's just a little bit over a half inch. So I'm going to move it down a hair. I don't want five eighths, I want a half. Because I want these to be long enough to cover up the, the parts that you don't want anybody to see. Now, you steam the heck out of it. It is called steam a seam. And that's a hint. <laughs> that's a hint to tell you that steam is what you need to set it. And so then you press it and you steam it. That will stay stuck forever. But I have had, after several washings, I've had some of it come unstuck in the dryer. So I always sew over mine. I have that, um, what's it called, a cover stitch machine, you know, that does two rows of stitching on the front and it does the zigzag on the back. And I love to do it, and I will do it down here. Um, but the thing about it is, it's like a serger and you've got to have three cones of thread. So if I can't find three cones of dark blue thread or turquoise thread, then I'll just sew to my regular sewing machine. So anyway, I'm going to come show you this hem real close. See? Isn't it nice? And here's the a seam that I cut and I flipped the bottom the other way so it's not fat. It's real thin. See? Awesome! And there's the tape that I still have to peel off the rest as I go around and hopefully you can see in the camera that the sticky stuff is still there. Huh? Okay, so that's my tutorial on how I do my hems. Now, I have something else I want to do. I want to have a contest. I don't know if you call it a contest. A game. I want to do a game. <laughs> I did this once before and I don't remember what the game was. Let me see. I asked him to, to think of something that I had a dream about or that I... I was going to do, and I don't remember what it was. Anyway, somebody guessed it. I don't remember what the question was or what the answer was at this point, but somebody guessed it. But anyway, Jerry and I were sitting at the bar in the kitchen yesterday. And, um, you know, Jerry's still working most of the weekend, but um, not like he did before, and it's not real stressful like it was before, so... He's much more talkative and much more husbandly, if that makes sense. So anyway, we're sitting at the bar, and um, as you know, we're, I'm retiring this coming Thursday, the last day of January, and Jerry doesn't get to retire till next November 1st. But he thinks about it all the time and talks about what he wants to do. So just out of the blue, Jerry said, when I retire, I would really like to do blank. I looked at him and I'm like, what? I never knew you wanted to do that. Are you serious? <laughs> Don't stick the pen in your finger. It really hurts. <laughs> so, whoever can guess what it is my husband said he wants to learn how to do when he retires, I will send you a surprise, okay? So if anybody wants to play that game, just play it. I'll see it in my comments. Leave a comment. And we'll play it until somebody says the right thing and then it will be over, okay? All right, I'm gonna let you go for now. I'm gonna finish this blouse. So, bye for now. <laughs>